From KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NOCO, a daily slice of Northern Colorado news and happenings. It's Friday, March 8th. I'm Erin O'Toole. Although it's technically still winter, at least until March 19th, the flowers will soon be in bloom at Colorado State University's Trial Garden. That's where many of the flower varieties you'll find in garden stores in the coming weeks undergo a rigorous real-world testing process to see which varieties are resilient enough for northern Colorado. The trial garden was started back in the 1970s on a small plot of land near the old stadium with only around 100 plant varieties. It's now one of the largest university trial gardens in the nation with hundreds of varieties and tens of thousands of plants. The way I described it is it's just rows of rainbows. There's so many different colors present out there. KUNC's Emma Vandenindy covered the final rounds of plant judging last summer. As spring approaches and sunny days are waiting in the wings, we're listening back to that conversation. So Emma, the trail garden sounds spectacular. Who runs this? Is it CSU horticulture students? So it is mostly run by undergraduate students and some graduate students. They all usually give their time in the summer because obviously they're studying in the fall. But one thing I thought was interesting is it's not all horticultural majors. Like there's just some students out there like, say, business majors or science majors that just like being in a garden. (laughs) And they do take some volunteers from the community, but usually like those are like master gardeners. So people that have like actually been trained on planting it well. You know, they're not taking amateurs that don't know what they're doing. And that's important because these plants are later going to be judged. Um, And I'm wondering, how exactly do you judge a plant? I mean, I'm sure there's more to it than just, oh, it looks good. Yeah, they actually have a whole like list of things that they look at. Is the plant sturdy? Like is the, are the blossoms like toppling over or are they standing up straight? Um, They look for diseases, you know, are Japanese beetles present? Are they like biting holes in the leaves? They look at the color and how vibrant it is. One of the things here in Colorado is we have such high light intensity that sometimes colors can fade on flowers. And so they want to see, are those colors still very bright? So yeah, they really do look at a lot of different factors. Um, I actually talked with Patty Bodwell. She's a master gardener for Weld County. And this is what she had to say about how she judges the flowers in the garden. You just kind of look at the plant overall and say, is it healthy or not? And kind of my thing the way I judge it is would I buy it and put it in my garden? (laughs) Fair enough. So what is the impact of the trial garden? Because it's not just bragging rights for the prettiest flower or the best looking plant, right? I mean, this actually can shape what garden stores and nurseries will have in stock. Yes, definitely. The main thing that I uncovered from this story that the gardeners had to say is that this really is a regional trial. So Colorado, unlike some of the other states in the Mountain West, has a really interesting climate. You know, they have low humidity. I mentioned earlier they have high light intensity. We got so much hail this summer, more than I've even seen back when I used to live in Minnesota. There's high elevation, there's temperature fluctuations. I mean, even today we're going from like 80 degrees to 30 degrees before the end of the day. So it really kind of becomes a survival of the fittest for the flowers. And if they get high rankings here, it means that they'll do really well. So the plant companies want to invest in flowers that, you know, people will spend money on and actually be happy with. And so I think Tate Erickson, he's an undergraduate student at CSU. He works on the annual trial garden, and I think he put the nature of this garden really well. You kind of stress them out a lot, and then you see them come out of it. And so Colorado here, it's like these plants are resilient if they can upstand to this. I feel like if someone could invent a hail-proof flower, they would make billions. Yes, they would they would be billionaires. <laughs> Emma, you were there during the final judging process, and I am so curious, what was that like? I mean, how fierce is the competition? Are the judges arguing or trying to persuade each other? I mean, I don't think anyone was necessarily yelling at one another. It wasn't like a very fierce competition, but in terms of picking a winner, it was. You know, some of these top flowers were only fractions of decimal points away from the other flowers and so the things that made one flower win over another would sometimes come down to those tiny details and basically they would just walk around with these clipboards and look at the top five flowers in each category so say they were looking at dahlias they would say okay here's number one two three four five 
should number one stay as number one in this category or should we move it to say number two or number three? And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they do this in August. So there's an industry day that's like a few weeks prior. And so that's when these flower experts come out and say, you know, here's what I like, here's what I don't like. And that's where they get these rankings from. But then this group that I went out with, with is like the final, final round. It's like looking at all of those results, looking at all those numbers and saying, these were the top ones. Are they still performing just as well in late August as they are, you know, in June and July? And so it really does separate out which flowers perform well across the entire growing season. Well, tell us about the winners. Yeah, so there were three different categories that they did. They did best new variety, best novelty plant, and best in show. And the best new variety was the Begonia Stonehenge, and it did really well in the sun, in the shade, in the ground, and in containers. They placed it everywhere, and it was a winner in all of those areas. Hmm. Um, The best novelty plant was the Centauria Chrome Fountain, and like the name suggests, it has a very unique silver color. It just looks like nickel all over it. And it even had some like little late surprise blossoms that were not present on the plant before, and they seemed to like that as judges. But the best in show was the apricot tricolor dahlia. And as the name suggests, it has a bright gradient pink color. It also had a lack of pests and an abundance of pollinators. In fact, when I went there, I didn't even know it was the winner, but there were so many bees around it. It was just such a popular plant for both the pollinators and for consumers and flower experts. And that's one thing that they said is that It's very, very rare for consumers and flower experts to agree just because there's different things that everyone judges on. And lots of times consumers are just like, oh, that's really pretty. But this kind of won in a landslide. There was just tons of people that said, yes, this is the best flower. Sure. All right. So, Emma, before I let you go, I I need to let you know I am terrible at growing things. I have a brown thumb. Is there any help to be found with the trial garden for people like me? Yes, I I, I am here to tell you that there is hope. I am not the best grower myself either. So I was asking for myself too. I was like, (laughs) what can I do? And the nice thing is that this garden is meant for finding out what grows well. So if you pick winning plants, these are plants that have gone through everything and have still survived. So starting with them, you're already going to have better results versus growing a plant that isn't suited for this environment. I actually talked with uh, Jim Klett. He was the former annual trial garden coordinator, and he had a few tips of his own. Try to get varieties that you know that are going to do well here. And that goes for perennials. It goes for annuals. It goes for woody plants. And know the location where you're going to be planting them. Okay. You know what? I, f- I feel better about this. <laughs> Emma Vandenaiti, thank you so much for your reporting on this, and thank you for talking with me about it today. Of course, happy to talk about flowers. You can see some of Emma's photos from the trial garden, including that best in show apricot tricolor dahlia at KUNC.org. That's it for us today here on In the NoCo. We'll be back with you on Tuesday with more of what's happening in Northern Colorado. Our theme music was composed by Colorado artist Robbie Reverb. Robin Vincent is our executive producer. I'm your host, Erin O'Toole. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget the time change on Sunday. And have a great weekend.